Pam? <laughs> That's right. Benny asked me to say a few words before he uh, oh. starts. Okay. Um, just so to give an overview about what happened in the background, behind the scenes, behind, behind the shear. Um, so I'm very privileged to uh, work with Dr. Benny, who uh, is giving these wonderful shiurim on Sefer Tehillim. And we're actually a team of people. Um, I believe uh, Audrey Samuels is also online. She's uh, participating in the shear. Um, and she is our excellent editor who goes through uh, Benny Shirim and checks that the English is um, just right. She looks at three different translations sometimes just to make sure that we get the right word. Um, and we work together to try to make the shear um, as user friendly as possible. As you can see, for people who have been here from the beginning, we're including more and more English. Um, this year is also shared on Tanakh.org, um, and they want us to start asking questions in our description. So we've included questions that are going to be answered. Um, so that's um, part of the work that we do. And we also work with uh, two other women, Ruchi Horowitz, who um, helps us to spread the word about the year all over. And she's been um, exceptionally helpful. And uh, Sarah Bednarsh, who is a student in high school, um, who has also been involved in putting up the classes and working online. And I think what unites all of us really is our love for Sefer Tehillim. We say Tehillim in our prayers uh, every day, but also, you know, when we have a special need to talk to Kaddish Baruch Hu, we say Tehillim. So everyone who has gotten involved in this project had something to say and some uh, beautiful input um, to share with Benny just because Tehillim is so close to our heart. And, and not only to just always be saying it and repeating it, but to now understand it fully, we, um, we appreciate the shiurim that uh, Benny has on his site, tehillim.org.il. So now I give it over to Benny. Okay. Susan, thank you very much. I would like to thank you. Your father's name, Zichon Olavacha, was David. Your husband's name, Admea Veselim, is David. So you live and support and help with uh, many, many aspects of my, my work, and I have no words to thank. The same is true for Audrey and for Sarah Bednarsh and Rochi and everybody, Rabbi Jay, and most importantly, all the participants. We are trying to teach online these difficult times of Corona, and I'm very, very, I feel very privileged to do so. Uh, whenever you have questions, you can write me. Of course, I will forward it to Suna. You can find her online for questions. So it is a very special opportunity. The lecture today is on the four, on the third unit, as you can see here. I like to focus on one text, on one mismon because that's a way to read, to learn, to have a text. But text is not easy for everybody on the same level. Everybody's not on the same level. So it might be difficult to have too many texts. And I tend to be to make mistakes to bring too many quotes. If we start with text, the text of Telim 34, I want to show you the connection that it is a twin psalm, psalm with 25. They're just twins. They have differences, but they are very, very similar. And in the middle is one mismol, 29, which is the turning point of the entire unit. And I want to show you the wonderful psychological religious narrative of unit number three from 25 to 34. Impossible to teach 10 mismorim, but I want to give you a, a taste how it looks like. So I always nervous if I have so many things to do and at the end is a nice uh, summary slide. I'm always nervous, will I get there in time to the summary slide or not? So in order that you should not be nervous and I should not be nervous, I decided let's start with the summary slide at the beginning. So if it's clear, or at least you have an idea at the beginning, so I'm more relaxed and hopefully the same is true for you. I want to give you now a summary of the entire first book. We didn't finish it yet, so we are just in the middle. We started with a prologue, a prologue Torah and Kingdom, Mismore 1 and 2. 
You see it here in clip arts. I know that clip arts is not for an academic conference. That is childish. Children play around with that. But I do think it helps to present an idea and to give it some flow. At the beginning is a concept. There is a king and the Ben Torah, a person who studies Torah, chapter one and two. Torah, kingdom, in Zion, two. That is the notion, that's the beginning, that is the key. And afterwards, we are aware there are a lot of troubles, a lot of evil, a lot of evil doers are, and you see bad people. But in the middle of the first unit, three to 14, we had the beautiful Psalm 8, which shows man is empowered by God to make a change in, in the world. And therefore, please see the clip art here. In this world, man has a great role and he can overcome the resha, the evil. That brings us to the next one. So what do we do in order to accomplish this goal? We come to the second unit. The second unit talks about the good moral qualities and King David is an example. And we talked about that in, in the last Chilim. In the, we have an entry psalm at 15 and 24, very similar, but there is a dynamic in between and the example of the human being who teaches us, who is our personal leader, is King David. King David, the psalm from uh, the book of Samuel, which is chapter 18, but it is, it is explained contextually what was the greatness of King David, that he was, that he was connected to the Torah. Chapter 19 teaches that, and it's followed by the other chapters, as we saw in last time in last week's Shiul. Once we have a good teacher who brings the kingdom of David to us, the kingdom of David will bring the kingdom of Hashem, of God, closer to us, or will bring us closer to Hashem. That's what's going to happen in the third unit, from 25 to 34. That's at the, that's a bird's view from very, very much a high, high, a high level. We the technique I use this for the first unit. We looked at eight and the neighboring, the adjacent Mismorim. The same we did for 19, the beginning and the end was added. Now for the third unit, it is like, see it, do it, teach it. You, I think it's very easy to identify that in the third unit. Furthermore, the third unit is the best one. It is like a geometrical, a geometric construct of a very, very clear unit, absolutely clear. And in the middle, we have the world and Hashem's kingdom on the world. We have at the beginning, the psalmist prays, Hashem, I am in trouble. Please guide me, teach me, help me, save me, bring me to closer to you. That's what happens at the end. And in chapter 34, he says, thank you so much for, for having assisted me. Thank you so much for having brought me to the point where I am. And from here, I want to teach others. 30, 34 and 25 are twins. And there is a way that the psalmist walks. I just, one of the beautiful examples, I'm not an expert in bibliotherapy, but if you read something, something happens not only with the person who talks, something happens with the person who reads it. He takes us from trouble, get closer to Hashem, experience the presence of Hashem, and from there to make a change in his life. At the end, he will teach. He asks somebody, teach me, Hashem, and at the end, he is the teacher. So that is a wonderful, amazing unit. We have today only time, uh, as I said, we will focus on chapter 34 and afterwards we'll take a look at 25 and a little bit at the end. So at least you will have a certain overview about the structure. So uh, those who read Hebrew, I published this unit uh, eight years ago, uh, six years ago in Hebrew. And it was a very interesting experience for me on different levels. First of all, I learned, and I, after having learned it for a year or two, I realized the beauty and no, none of our Meforshim, not the classical one and not the new ones, identified that. We have quite a remarkable phenomena. The Bible is thousands of years old. And here we have something which is new, something, a new finding, a new 
insight, to me, very exciting, very exciting, innovative approach in Parshanot. But it was furthermore, not only that I had the schut to read it in other languages, in German and so on, and to research that and to present it graphically, as you will see, it was a great experience for me because those people on the editorial board of this journal are my teachers, are great experts, and they gave me not a hard time, but a very good time to review my paper. And they couldn't believe it at the beginning and said, no, nobody says that it can't be that Benny Gesundheit brings this chidushim. I quoted all the researchers and at the end, they were convinced it is true. And just recently I met one of them and he told me, I asked him a question because I'm, <laughs> because I'm preparing a shiur in English for 929. So I have to ask my friends and my teachers. So I asked him, how do you explain that? So he told me, oh, it's clear. According to your explanation, everything is clear. So he read it and that is an interesting process I hope you will understand this summary slide better uh, after the shiur, I will bring it again. So here is the text, I will read the Hebrew and afterwards we will discuss it on different levels. Text of the Mismo, the context and the intertext. You have here the Hebrew for your convenience, those who need it, I will read it in Hebrew. Le-David b'shanoto et ta'amo l'fnei avimelech v'yegrashehu v'yelach. אברכה את אדוני בכל עת, תמיד תהילתו בפי. באדוני תתהלל נפשי, ישמעו ענבים וישמחו. גדלו לאדוני תהיו נרוממו שמו יחדיו. דרשתי את אדוני וענני, ומכל מגורותיי הצילני. הביטו אליו ונהרו, ופניהם אל יחפרו. זה אני קרא, ואדוני שמע, ומכל צרותיו הושיעו. חונה מלאך אדוני סביב ליראיו ויחלצם. תאמו וראו כי טוב אדוני אשרי הגבר יחסבו. יראו את אדוני קדושיו כי אין מחסור ליראיו. כפירים רשו ורעבו ודורשי אדוני לא יחסרו כל, כל טוב. לכו בנים שמעו לי יראת אדוני על עמדכם. מי האיש שחפץ חיים אוהב ימים לראות טוב? נצור לשונך מרע ושפתיך מדבר מרמה. סור מרע ועשה טוב, בקש שלום ורדפהו. עיני אדוני אל צדיקים ואוזניו אל שבתם, פני אדוני בעושי רע, להכרית מארץ זכרם. צעקו באדוני שמע, ומכל צרותם הצילם. קרוב אדוני לנשברי לב, ואת, ואת דכאי רוח יושיע. רבות רעות צדיק ומכולם יצילנו אדוני. שומר כל עצמותיו, אחת מהן הלא נשברה. תמותי תרשע רעה, ושונאי צדיק יאשמו. פודה אדוני נפש עבדיו, ולא יאשמו כל החוסים בו. A beautiful psalm. Of course, I will touch only on some aspects worthwhile to read it afterwards. over and over. So here, that is the text. That is the classical template, which I would like to suggest, and I work according to this template, both in teaching the shul and presenting it in the book, and most importantly, in my own learning. What is this text? What is the structure? Here, text, what's the internal division? And we have keywords, a very simple technique. Check which word appears several times. Of course, the meaningful ones. and try to see what is the dynamic, the story within the mismo. Afterwards, compare it to the context in Tehillim and to the intertext in other books. It works nicely. And here we have the first example. We look at some words. What is the structure of the mismo? The structure is that he thanks God at the beginning that I, will, I want to thank him with all the other poor people because he saved me from all my trouble. And I'm happy, I'm saved, God saves and protects. And he invites everybody, taste and see how good Hashem is, verse 9. And all, the, all those who fear Hashem, they should continue to do so, and I want to teach them. Verse 12, I want to teach them. What do I want to teach them? To fear God. What does that mean that I want to teach them? Verse 12, what is God? good life. 
Who is the person who loves life? That's the teaching of Yirat Hashem. To fear God means we love life. We lo love to see good days. We do not talk bad things about our friends. Uh, we keep our tongues and our, um, and our lips. Don't do turn away from bad things and do the right thing, 15 and search for peace and watch after. And that's the teaching of Yirat Hashem. And afterwards it says from 16 to the end, God eyes are with you, God face is with you. If you call him, he listens and helps you. And all those who have a broken heart and are depressed in their spirit, 19, Hashem will save them from them. This mismo is built in a most beautiful structure according to Aleph Bet, alphabetically. It means there is a clear, clear teaching. There is something in mind of the psalmist from A to Z. It's true. Vav is missing. It's in the middle of the pasuk. And at the end, we have another pasuk, which starts with pay. Interesting. It starts with pay, because this way, one of the commentators says, the beginning is Aleph, the middle is Lamet, and the end is pay. That is the world Aleph, Ulpan to learn. It is a teaching, a wisdom psalm who wants to teach us something. Lamed, teaching, in uh, another word for that is le'alef, to teach it. So the psalm wants to teach us something. That is one comment on the, on the text, the structure of the mismo. But I want to point you out some other words. Tamit tehilato befi, verse number two. Always the tehila his praise is in my mouth. Tehillah is not only the word for praise, it is what we do in Tehillim. We praise God. If we praise God, verse 2, he says something beautiful in verse 3. Bahashem titalel nafshi. In God, my own soul praises its myself. That is a very interesting play of words. I summarized it here. If I praise God, I am capable to reveal in my own soul what is praiseworthy in myself, in my personality. So if verse number two, is I talk to God by saying the praise, he says, actually, I praise myself. Tit halel is a hit pael form, a reflective form, I praise myself or my soul is praised by, by myself by, by connecting to Hashem. Uh, that is not only affect theologically I towards Hashem, it has an impact on my own being, on my own existence. Interesting enough, check the words uh, carefully. At the beginning we have Tehillah, Tehillah and Nafshi. And at the end, we have nefesh. Hashem saves the soul of his servants and nobody will have a damage. The nefesh, the soul of his servants are saved by Hashem. Why? Because they connect to Hashem. At the beginning, the tehillah enables me that with my tehillah, I connect to Hashem. And by having done so, my own nefesh is stronger and is actually by doing so, saved by Hashem. That's called inclusion in, 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 the, in, in the science, in the inclusion, a beginning at the end, a beautiful connection. Furthermore, we have uh, at the beginning that Hashem hears a mistake, Yishma'u anavim ve'ismachu, Yishma'u should be read. The poor people should listen and be happy. If they listen, oh, Hashem listens, Hashem shamea, mikol tsarotav hishiyam. If you listen, and Hashem listens, so I ask everybody, students, come and listen, the Chuvanim, Shimuli, and at the end again, Hashem listens, Hashem Shamea, Mikol Tzoratav. There is a dialogue. We call Hashem and He listens, and I call my students, and they listen, and I call further students to, to listen together. Here, we have a very interesting connection. Darashti et Hashem va'anani, I was, was seeking for Hashem and he helped me 
And now he tells all the others, you should be doresh, the same word like midrash, search for Hashem, and you will be successful as well. His own positive experience is translated now for others to share and follow his positive experience. He is a teacher. We have a very beautiful connection at the end. Uh, the lines here, uh, for some reason, disappeared. I apologize. The psalm has in verse 15, turn away from bad things and do the good things. Interesting enough, good things appear beforehand. Tov, tov, tov. Stay away from bad words. And it says clearly, and at the end, we have three, three more times. But very something very beautiful happens here. Staying away from the bad things and to do the good things uh, is a big, big statement of this mismo. Please keep it in mind in chapter 37, these four words are repeated. We'll talk about it next week. I would expect we should see more positive thinking than negative thinking. If the message is uh, turn, turn away from bad things and stick to the good things. So we have only uh, four times good, tov, 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 tov. But we have five times ra. That's very disturbing. If you should turn away from the bad thing and look only at the good things, why is the mismo telling me five times ra? and only four times tov. So that bothered me for a long time, but it's very often, it's very obvious. If you look at the end, whatever is mentioned about bad is in a positive context. Pnei Hashem ra. God will take, will take care of those who are following bad qualities. Rabot, raot tzadik, you think tzadik, that you have a lot of bad things? No, mikulam yotzirem Hashem. God will take it away from you. And the bad behavior will collapse, will cause a collapse of the evildoers. So even if it is mentioned Ra, it is actually, if you take a closer look at it, it is not bad anymore. Because the good, the positive attitude resolved the existence of the bad. Yes, it's called Ra. But actually, the meaning is, it is not bad anymore. It was bad, but since we stick to the, to the motto of turn away from the bad and stick to the good things, the bad things are turning, at the end, they're turning out to be not as bad as it, as it sounds ra. They are actually good. So that is a beautiful insight of positive thinking with these beautiful words of ra and tov in our mismo. So far, the, the text of this mismo. As I said, the center of the text is Lamet. Lechu vanim shimuli, come my sons, listen to me, I will teach you Yerat Hashem. A wonderful statement that the psalmist says, everybody who wants to learn, he is my child. Kindalach. He calls them, be my guests, be my children. I really want to teach you. I have a mission. I have a legacy to teach you. This beautiful legacy, let me show it to you, is the famous Yeshiva in Lublin, where Rav Meir Shapira, the founder of the Daf Yomi, was teaching. And you can see here in the middle, that's a picture from these days, Lechuvanim Shimuli. Here you have it, how it looks like today, after the restoration. Lechuvanim Shimuli, Yerat Hashem Alam Dechem. That was uh, one of the most famous yeshivot in Eastern Europe before the war. And uh, just to uh, point out, in Gush Etzion, where I live, Lechu Vanim Shimuli, Yirat Hashem Alam Etchem, that is where we live in Alon Shvut. So I invite everybody to Gush Etzion to see this place and come and to learn here. This psalm has a lot of messages. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about intertextuality. Why should we deal with intertextuality? Why does Meshigas read the text, stick to the book, and don't run around, don't jump around. It's like a nervous behavior. Why do, I op why do I have to open another book? Of course, I ask it now because I have such a good answer. The first line of the Pasuk says, he said that when he, 
ויגרשהו וילך. David said this psalm when he feigned madness before Avimelech, who drove him away and then he left. That happened when David had to run away from Shaul and he had to make himself crazy, mentally sick, and he behaved as a sick man in order to save himself. Let's take a look at the Pasuk in Shmuel, Shmuel Aleph. And it says there, those words worried David. That's the story with King Shaul. And he became very much afraid of the king. So he changed his demeanor, his, he changed his demeanor before them and feigned madness before them. He scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his saliva run down his beard. What a terrible picture of famous King David, the great writer, the wonderful poet, the wonderful king. What a figure. And we see him here in his baddest, in the worst shape. And that is the beginning of the mismo I want to teach. So the classic German commentators, I look, I searched carefully. They said, no connection. I don't understand. How can you say something like that? No connection with all your papers and, and books and reputation as a psalmist. But King David thinks differently. It's the beginning of Pasuk, of, of Pasuk 1. What is the connection? We see David here in the most terrible state. And here he teaches beautifully. Yirat Hashem. We see a great teacher. And it takes us back to his traumatic experience when he had to run away and play a fool man in order to survive King David. What is the message? I do think that is a most beautiful example. Too bad that these some of the German scholars missed it because they didn't want whatever. They couldn't find it. That is a beautiful message. He is in the most traumatic experience of his life. He lost his mind. He had to play foolish. To, to say, I have no values, I have no mind, nothing. At that point in time, he made, according to Sefer Tehillim, he made a very important decision. I will never lose my mind. In the future, I will come back and teach my mind and share it with others. I do have a very clear mind. So if they think, the German scholars, that there is no connection, they got the point. He was in a situation when his mind was lost and he had traumatic experience. At that point in time, he made the decision. I will never lose my mind. I will always touch it. How do I know that this interpretation is true? Because the Mizmor says it. At the beginning, it says, King David, when he feigned madness before Vimelech and he lost his taste of life, ta'amo is mind. In verse 9 it says, ta'amu u'ra'u ki tov Hashem, ashrei ha'gever yechsevo. He uses the same word to tell them, never ever lose your mind. There is no way I can translate that. But the word he lost his mind in verse 1 is the same word, the same letters, tet ein mem vav, here as his mind and here taste God. When he was in the worst condition, he made up his mind to, 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 to respect and to, uh, to develop good values because he was in a such bad shape. So it is the counter, the, the, the connection is a contrary connection. By having such a terrible experience, he came to the very good experience. He had to run away from this king and he asked now his teacher, his students, don't run away. Vayelach. That's a wonderful example, which I think has a wonderful intertextual meaning. I want to share with you something else. We have at the, at the end here in the Mismo, God is close those with a broken heart and those, with it, uh, those who are depressed. Who are these people? We know a lot of people who have a broken heart. We, have, we, lot of know, we know a lot of people who are depressed unfortunately. And we have to tell them God can be with you, God is with you, if you know how to relate. But here we have an outstanding example, which is remarkable, how clear it is to teach us what is the connection. 
Nishberei Lev in the entire Bible appears twice in Psalm 34 and in Yeshayahu 61. God tells there those who returned from the exile in Babylon, the spirit of Hashem was up in me since the Lord has anointed me to bring tidings to the humble. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to declare freedom for the captives. Here is the Pasuk in, in Hebrew. Levaser Anavim, the same Anavim are mentioned also in our Mismo. And they are broken heart and they are not captives anymore. They should experience freedom. They are not in jail. They have open eyes and can watch. Those are the Nishrei, Nishbarei Lev of Sefer Tehili. So what's the connection? Yeshayahu lived at the first time temple. King David, how is Yeshayahu and King David, how are they connected? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a coffee. We have to have a coffee to discuss this point. We have to talk. Why do we have to talk? Because we have here a wonderful insight, not only on, uh, not only on uh, Tehillim 34, we see it in a much broader context. Sorry for not having translated it. At the time of the first temple, Yeshayahu was a prophet in Eretz Israel, And we have a structure of the entire book of, of Yeshayahu, a lot to say about contextual interpretation of Sefer Yeshayahu. It's not our topic for tonight. A lot to say. But the second part of Yeshayahu is talking for sure about the time after the exile, from chapter 40 to 66. If you think that's only the biblical research who said it's Deuter Deutero Yeshayahu, the second part of Yeshayahu, or even the third one, and you think no belief, no Jews who believes in the values of Yehadut can say that, I would like to refer you to the Ibn Ezra. He says exactly the same on his commentary on chapter 40. From here on, we are talking about the second temple period. So why is it in the same book? Can't you open another book? That is Yeshayahu prophecy in the first time. And that's the second time. Open another book. It's another person, another time. The answer is simple. The same spirit of Yeshayahu in the first temple period will help you to overcome the exile. And inspired by the prophecy of Yeshayahu in the first temple period, you will continue to live according to the teachings of Yeshayahu at the time of the first temple in the second temple period as well. Therefore, Yeshayahu, the second Yeshayahu, quotes Koresh. He quotes the return from the exile. We will see that many, many times in our lectures that I will point that out. The same exactly is true in Sefer Tehillim. It was written, as we know, by King David, but we saw the Midrash last week. It was edited by Ezra the writer at the second temple period. So here we have a very confusing situation, but that's the message. Whatever was taught at the time of King David is relevant at the second temple period when they returned from the exile, exactly what Yeshayahu did. So in the same token that Yeshayahu has a very active afterlife, the same is true for King David. He was continued by Ezra, who completed that. But there is a huge difference because Yeshayahu tells the word of God. It comes down from heaven to, to, to the human being and Tehillim prays. So whatever Yeshayahu said that there are broken people who will come back from the exile and God takes them and sends the Mashiach, Sefer Tehillim says very close, face to face. Listen, my students, listen, my children. God helps the Nishbarei Lev. Who are the Nishbarei Lev? These are those who come back and rebuild Eretz Israel in the spirit of the first temple period, as by Yeshayahu and Tehillim. And they continue with the same spirit in the second temple period, according to Yeshayahu. And that is what King David, sorry, Ezra says. So to ask too many historical questions, will bring us to the terrible situation that we lose the point. It's not or King David or Ezra. It is Ezra who takes King David's 
inspiration and says, whatever was in the past will be in the future. And if you want to see an example of those who came back and lived the spirit of a broken heart, I took a, repeat, a picture from survivors of Buchenwald who came to Haifa in 45. Those are the Nishbarei Lev. And the, and the Psalm te, uh, wants to teach them, stay away from the bad things and try to do the good things and start a new life. That's the message of Yeshayahu. It's the very, uh, according to the vision of God. And that's the teaching of, of Tehilim, according to the vision of uh, Tehilim. Now, so far, textuality and intertextuality. And now we have to talk about contextuality. It's a big challenge. I apologize here. It's another format of my graphics, but you recognize our mismo. It is the Aleph Bet from Aleph to Tav and at the end Pode. And we have exactly the same mismo in Psalm 25. Just the same. I will show you the shared features and afterwards we'll point out the differences. Is that it has an Aleph Bet. And all these words without really reading them now, are just the same. You see even phrases. And he talks here about the same terms. And it says, listen to this beautiful verse in 15. My eyes are always with God because he will take me out of, the, of my trouble here. And at the end, we have a word here, Vehatsileni, please save me. The word Hatsileni, if you put other punk, uh, another punctation, we have it here and we have it here. Hitsilani, in 34, he thanks. God saved me, Baruch Hashem. Listen how wonderful and happy I am. And please join me and be happy. In, in chapter 25, he says, I'm in big trouble. I need somebody who teaches me. Please pay attention. The Aleph Bet here is broken. Instead of a Kuf, we have two Resh. Instead of one Aleph, we have one, two, and a Bet, and a Bet, an Aleph, and Aleph Bet, and Aleph, and Aleph, and Aleph. He has a hard time to start. Aleph Bet, Bet, Aleph, Aleph, Aleph Bet. I'm trying to get organized like alphabetically. It doesn't really work. He is also missing a Vav, and at the end, he tries to be organized. He wants teaching. He wants guidance but he can't get it because he's broken. What is he saying? And now let's look at a few of the more specific terms. He says, Who is the man, who is this man who fears God? He, it means Hashem, will guide him on the road that he chooses. Why do we know that it is Hashem will guide him because the, the, the psalmist says, he, he tells Hashem, teach me Hashem. So it's obvious who is the man who fears Hashem. He wants to be taught by Hashem and he should show him the way. I need guidance. I'm, in a, I'm blocked. I'm lost. Interesting that one of the commentators, the Malbim says, who is the man who fears God who can teach me? I don't think he's right because the context says I need guidance from Hashem. I'm in trouble in 25. In 34, in 34, he has a deja vu. The same experience of his trouble, the same words describing his trouble, the same alphabet of his trouble. Wow, I'm at another point. It's a, like a post-traumatic recovery, and he is now happy and having a l'chaim and teaching others. What is he doing? He is teaching. Look at the pasuk. Instead of having somebody who teaches him, 25, he says, he, I want to be the teacher. If I teach you, I will get all my students what I experience. Hashem gave me guidance and teaching. I want to offer that to others. Rabbi Jay, how do you like that as a teacher? I need your support. That is sorry, the message. I, I was muted. Sorry, sorry. That's right. 
That's without true. words. You are you are muted, but I, I I hear I got a clear answer. If he wants here the guidance from Hashem that he should teach him, if he experienced a good experience and he was saved, now he is going to teach. What a beautiful message. So who is God? Who is the man who fears Hashem? Hashem will teach him. Yes, Hashem will teach him. But at the end of the unit, it will be the man himself who is going to be the teacher. I'm working in the, in the mission, in the legacy of Hashem. That is the, the value of teaching, as you see here. Next, next example is, we looked at Enai Tamit El Adonai Kihu Yotzi Mereshet Raglai. My eyes are always with God. And here it's the opposite. Enei Adonai El Sadikim Vo'oznav El Shavatam. The same idea, the, the eyes of Hashem are with me. So it's the same experience but from another perspective here. And here, what most beautifully, we have the Pede Elohim et Yisrael, Mikol Sorotav, God, you should save us, Am Yisrael, from all our troubles. It's an order, it's a pray, it's a prayer, Pede. The same word, Pede, the very same word, is added to the alphabet in here, but not as a prayer, as a praise. Pode Adonai Nefesh Avadov, he saved us. And I'm not in trouble anymore. What was the prayer here is the praise here. And now I want to show you something. I learned Tehillim, but I used to learn also a little bit other uh, Pakim, uh, other books in the Bible. And I read uh, Sefer Shmuel and I said, wow, that's the explanation for Tehillim. King David says twice about himself, Chai Adonai Yashel Padayat Nafshi Mikol Sarah. When he wants to swear, he says, by the name as the Lord lives, who delivered my soul from every distress. He says that twice. That was his statement. I was in trouble in my life. Hashem saved me. The word pada, nafshi, mikol tzara, is the experience of King David. That's exactly what our unit of 25 and 34 connect us. We have an alphabet here and here, but we have an additional verse. Pada na nefesh tzara. That is King David's experience. We identify ourselves by adding this pasuk and say, please save us Hashem, the way you did it with King David. That's a wonderful intertextual insight. I didn't see that published in the research. Now we learned about 25 and we learned about 34. And I want to show you now, I have a lot of graphics. I'm not be able, if we understood the beginning and the end, we have a very good starting point and an end. Now I show you the beautiful geometric, clearly, clearly designed structure of everything that is in between. Exactly in the middle, we have we have, we have the same words which we saw here, the alphabet, Mizaish, and teaching, and Enei Hashem, I said that. Exactly in the middle, let's build a bridge. We have 29. Exactly. 29 is built, a beautiful uh, song, which praises Hashem, which experiences Hashem, which faces Hashem. I want to get to him. I see him, Kivyachol. And afterwards, he, he blesses Am Yisrael and the entire world. That's the middle. Beforehand and afterwards, we have an envelope. Just before and just afterwards, exactly the same words. And we have another envelope between 27 and 31. The last two psukim are exactly the same words. So obviously, there is an intention by doing so. That is a bridge. And we are going through a process during 10 Mizmorim to get closer to Hashem. And when we walk out, we are very, very happy to walk out there. Chapter 30 says, When Hashem uh, started to build his home, Malbim says he built his home in his own heart. When he walks out, we'll see that in a moment. So I show you now the entire 10 Mizmorim. That's the way I like to teach. And that's the way I like to study. Everything is here. Of course, impossible to see it. It is almost a, a meter, this uh, handout. It's not a handout, it's an arm out. You need uh, back and forth and fold it. Everything is here. And if I read that 10 times, 100 times, I see everything. 
and I'm not going to show that today, we saw the beginning and the end is the same. I put the parallel text underneath, we discussed it a few minutes ago. In the middle, we have this mismore, which is clearly, clearly surrounded internally by a, um, a concentric structure. And ex I will see it show it in a moment. This one and this one are related and those are related. And that creates a flow. And here are all the, the texts which appear in parallel. I am happy to put it online. It's a huge format. That's the way to learn it, to really, really see it. But now in the next few fly slides, I want to show that to you in a nutshell. That's chapter 29. Hashem appears, we should come to him, we should give him honor. And we have 18 times the name of Hashem in green. We have seven times the word voice. And it's constructed clearly four times at the beginning, four times at the end Hashem. At the beginning, we want we have to go to Hashem and respect him. And at the end, it is Hashem who protects us at the end. It's another direction. It's the same connection. In the middle, we have seven times the world call and we listen, we hear, we don't see it, but we, we listen to something. That is the appearance of Hashem. A beautiful chapter, we are not capable to look at it more closer. But interesting enough that Chazal, and I'm a yeshiva boy, Chazal say exactly what, what they say here. Why do we know we have to pray in the Shmonesra, in the, in the prayer of 18 blessings? 18? Because 18 times the name of Hashem is mentioned here. That is facing Hashem. Amida lifnei Hashem, standing in front of Hashem. Chazal had an unbelievable sensitivity. Now look at 28 and look at 30. And I pointed it out for you both here and here. Eilecha Hashem ekra. I call to you, Hashem. These three words appear together only twice in the entire Bible. Here and Elech Hashem Ekra. Yordei vor, bo. Hashem, save me, please. Otherwise, I will go down to hell. And here he thanks Hashem. Adonai ha'elita min sha'ol nafshi. Hecheyetani mi yordi vo. You saved me from going down to hell. Yordi vor is even, yordi vo is even spelled exactly like here. Obviously, they connect. There is a, a there is a, a correspondence between these psukim. So that is one connection. I show you now another connection. Since he came out from the from the experience facing Hashem, in every mismo, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34, five times the word simcha, joy, is mentioned. You didn't you didn't give joy to my enemies in 30. In 31, I'm happy. In 32, I'm happy that others are happy with me. In 34, he says, Yishma'u anavim ve'ismachu. He invites others to enjoy with him. So the joy, the simcha, is a basic experience in the second part, because here he's happy. Before he wasn't happy at all. He was in trouble. That is a typical feature of the structure. And here you see, in chapter 27, here, and chapter 31, the last line, the bottom line, is the following. Look to the Lord, be strong and of good courage. Oh, look to Hashem. It is a singular. You is Lashon Yachid, one person. It's exactly at the end of chapter 31, in the same, they call it a strategic location. In the middle, the same word, be strong and of good courage, all of who wait for Hashem. It's Bleshon Rabim, the plural. Chizku ve'yametz levavchem. Chazak ve'yametz levavchem, or libcha, only twice in the Bible. It is an encouragement. Go to Hashem, get there. Once you were there, you say it, oh, it's not my experience. I'm such a happy man that I experienced that. I'm happy. I want others to be happy. I came through that because I was a chazak ve'amitzlibecha. Now I want to share that with others. Exactly a beautiful location in the middle. 
So that is a remarkable structure. Where do we know Chazak ve'ametz levavecha? A beautiful additional context, not only contextuality, we make now from the contextuality an intertextual message. Moshe told Yoshua, and Yoshua told Am Yisrael, Chazak ve'ematz. So if Moshe did that for his student, David does it exactly the same for his student as well. What a beautiful structure. We have to learn that 10 hours and see more and more and more. Here we have a beautiful insight that it is a clear structure. Uh-oh, now I'm in trouble. Here we have three mismorim in between, and here we have four. Big trouble, Benny. Big trouble. Go home and wish everybody a good evening. I won't do that because there is a reason why there are four mismorim. Why? If everything is so clear, so the lack of symmetry has a powerful message. And I'm privileged and touched to tell you the explanation why, why, that is, why here we have a difference. Again, these two mizmorim are actually one. They appear as two, but they are one. Why? First of all, Mizmor Lamed Gimel 33 has no opening of La Hashem, nothing. It doesn't start as a new Mizmor. It says in your books 33, but it doesn't have the classical opening Le David. Furthermore, what we have at the end here of Simchu Badonai Vigilut Sadikim Vaharninu Kol Yishreilev is exactly Rananut Sadikim Badonai Velay Sharim Navatila. So 33 continues 23 without any opening. It's the same word. It's a flow. So why did they do twice? It destroys the structure. And here come the two outstanding scholars, Hosfeld and Sengel. And in a separate paper, they explain. This Mismol talks about the nations. Other nations, they can join. It's not only a Jewish experience. Other nations, Ashrei HaGoi, uh, they can join. And God, who created their heart, he brings them if they want to join. So these two German scholars, Catholic uh, scholars, they say if somebody wants to join the Jewish people, there is a place for him. It's an extra chapter. He can join there. It's actually, if he joins them, he's part of them. 20 through two and, and, and 30, 32 and 33 are one if you join. But if you don't join, you're out. So the asymmetry has a wonderful message according to Zenger and Hosfeld. Interesting enough that Rosh Hashanah exactly talks about this message, but I have to run forward. Now I bring you the last proof that it works. Nobody less to prove that there is a contextual interpretation than Kutch He understood it. Why? Because in chapter 32, verse 8, we have the, the, the statement from Hashem. Hashem says, let me enlighten you and show you which way to go. Hashem will teach you, me. Let me offer counsel. My eye is on you. That is what he says here in the middle of chapter 20, 32. Hashem talks and uses the language from all the other mizmorim. In 25, 26, three times, two times, 27 and here. And it continues. So the word of Hashem is a response on the prayer of the human being. God understands contextual interpretation. I'm not making jokes. I'm absolutely serious. God listens to our prayers. We search him. He listens to all the words we said in the unit. And he, and he responds exactly in the words we used in our prayer. He uses them as a response. That's not the literary proof, a scientific proof. That's a religious experience. He listens. He listens exactly the way we prayed. That is a wonderful insight which I shared here. So we summarize here. The summary slide. We looked at that at the beginning and we saw that there are three units. Here we get closer to Hashem in an interaction with him. We have something very special. At the beginning, you, you, you have to deal with evil, with Resha. You want to have gooder moral qualities. If you get good, better moral qualities by King David, you get closer to Hashem. 
and you learn from him. We should see next time what will be the next story in the fourth unit. And that will be something very, very special. It, doesn't, it has another structure and other mechanism. We'll look at that at the next time. We'll talk a lot about Yeshayahu and Tehillim. So that was the closing of the third cycle today. And next time we focus on the first one. On the fourth cycle, I give an overview. And I want you to read in particular chapter 37 and chapter 40, which I will take a closer look at in the next Shiurim. That's the summary. We saw chapter 34, the structure and the message, the world of chapter 34. We afterwards compared that to the twin psalm uh, 25, a wonderful connection. They are so closely connected. So if they are connected, put them one to the other. No, because they want to show in between you go through a process of recovery. 29 is the turning point to face Hashem. And there is a religious psychological uh, unit. I uh, summarize here some of the uh, references. Interesting enough, a lot in German, Barbiero, a great teacher, a researcher, a personal fr friend of mine. I will mention him next time. And nothing is written in Hebrew on that. I was the first one. Nothing so far to understand that. There is a lot to be learned in Sefer Tehillim in a totally new approach. Are there any questions? I think there may be one or two on the chat box, or it's mainly comments. Take a look. But if anybody would like to ask, uh, can speak up or write in. Thank you. Yes, uh, OK, while we wait a second, just a reminder, of course, tomorrow, Dr. Lakshman is starting his series on um, on Shadal, Bibl modern biblical commentaries, the ones they didn't teach you in yeshivas, we put it. And then tomorrow night at 8.30, the Haftorah of the week, we're going to start a weekly series on that. Um, Moshe Sokolov will have class Thursday morning, Thursday night, and all next week. So just follow your emails. Um, just uh, a, a reminder, we changed the clock. Uh, in Israel, we change the clock, I believe. I didn't change it on, 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 on Thursday night or Saturday night in Israel. I don't know when you change it. Saturday. On Saturday night? Okay, anyways, yeah. you're changing it this week. We change it the following week. So next week, it's only going to be six-hour difference, which means all the classes that for those in Israel next week will be one hour earlier. So the Menachem Leap, that class, uh, all our 11 a.m. classes will actually be at 5 p.m. in Israel. We're going to keep the Eastern time at 11 and so just uh, that has been a note uh, every day we have class, you know, um, so Dr. Benny's class will be at 615 Israeli time next week. I don't know if that's better or worse or if that's what it is. And then a week later, um, Chutz Laaretz and Israel will join again together. Okay. Who structured the Prakim of Tehillim? Benny, if you see that last question, I, um, the writer or later on? So that is a fascinating, of course, the most crucial question if we talk about the contextual interpretation, who shaped, who organized it? Nobody knows. I can tell you, uh, I guess, of course, it was uh, Ezra, Ezra, the writer, but mm -hmm. whoever it was, he was a very, very smart man. He was a very, very smart man. Because if you look now at the at the flow of these ideas, something very creative had to be there. I mentioned in my first tour and the introductory course that, just a moment, I mentioned in the uh, introductory course that nobody knows who did that, but I mentioned in Midrash briefly, Arachim, values, and Aricha. In Hebrew, to edit is the same word, Ein Reishcha, like values. The person who edited that, he added a lot, a lot of values, added values by putting it together. If we look at the, as this structure of these uh, Mizmorim, which I showed you here all together, and you read it, I do it many times when I have these huge handouts and I read it in 20 minutes. And I think about that. The message of each Mizmor is terrific. If you read it together, you learn another level a new dimension, you experience much, much, much more than just reading one and two and three. There is a synergistic effect. One and two, because it is a story, is much more. People did not, did not recognize that. And whoever did it, we don't know. I guess it is Ezra, 
the sofer. But we will never know. What we should know is that there is a story and we should find all these connections. I hope I convinced, no, I don't hope I convinced you. I wanted to teach. We saw, we saw in 34 that it's a big uh, message and the legacy and the scope, the privilege to teach. I'm a teacher. I'm just showing you what I learned and I have fun to share it with others. Whether you're convinced or not, the third one is interestingly enough, the third unit is interestingly enough, much better organized. Why? Because at the beginning, you have a lot of trouble. You try to get organized in eight and Aleph Bet in nine and ten. And here we have more organized we, because we are more organized. So the structure of the second unit is getting more organized, not the text, the yeah, reader. The chat, the and the third unit is just perfectly organized. When I studied the first book, I studied this unit and afterwards went backwards. And I saw it's the same technique, it's the center and adjacent and the beginning and the end. But there is a reason why it is organized. There will be a reason why here we have another organization. There is a very clear, clear intention into that. Does that answer the question? Whoever asked the question? Speechless. That I can't. Okay, and then okay. Well, uh, we, um, yes. Okay, there you go. Somebody is pointing out really that you don't then really have 150 prakim in Sefer Tilim, of course, because that's in a sense an artificial number as all the prakim are. And uh, right, I'm so Manny. That's more or less your question. Okay. Oh, may I ask? Uh, so I, just want, I just want to add prakim in other books. In they are not clearly defined as an independent book. So it was uh, the Archbishop of, Can of uh, in, in England, Canterbury, who, 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 who called it one, two, three. In Tehillim, we have headings. So if we have a heading, it's a new chapter. Oh, it might be that 33 and 32 are the same. There is no heading. So it is for sure right what I explained beforehand in the name of Tsengel and Hospital. There was another question. Somebody asking I on the truck. I wanted to ask about Lechubanim instead of Bobanim. Uh, very good. So first of all, there is a beautiful uh, Hasidic explanation. If you want to teach, don't tell them they have to come to you. Show them how to go their own way. That is a nice explanation, which is... Uh, very nice. Lechuvanim, you go your own way. Bo means you come to me. If you really want to educate them, you want to tell them, go your way. And you should listen, but you go your own way. But as I told you before, when I looked at the Mismo, we spoke about intertextuality, and that was the slide here. I pointed out that Lechu. At the beginning, it was Ledavid when he ran away from the king, who drove him away and he left. The word he left means Vayelach, right? That's exactly what he did. King David ran away. You see that in Shmuel Aleph, chapter 22. So he had to run away, but he tells his student, you walk to me. So he uses the word ta'amo, vayelach, in the mismo to make a point, a positive transformation of his past negative experience. I think that makes a lot of sense. Does it make sense for you? Yes, thank you. Okay, Dr. Penny, we'll, we'll let you go. Uh, have a thank great day. Thank you very much. Erev Tov, uh, Laila Tov, everybody be well. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning.